Welcome everybody to another deep dive edition of the Chicks on the Right podcast, where we're going to talk about the debt ceiling with someone who actually knows all about it <laughs> and can speak much more intelligently on the world of finance than we ever could. And that's Zach Abraham, the chief financial, or I'm sorry, chief investment officer at Bulwark Capital Management, friend and sponsor of our show. We're always so glad to get insight about some of the things that are happening that affect all of us so deeply and the debt ceiling absolutely qualifies the McCarthy and Biden are supposed to, and maybe the other clowns in the Democrat party are supposed to be meeting today to maybe come to a deal. But like yesterday it was sounding like McCarthy thought they were still worlds apart. So what does this really mean, Zach? Like is the world going to end in 16 days <laughs> from this recording? If in fact we max out and hit that debt. Ceiling? And what does it mean for people like that? Like just regular old schmucks, you know, that are like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm the right world. there with you. I'm like, right there with you. Like, do we, uh, why should people care? You know? Yeah. Or do we care? Yeah. Right. Um, so it's funny all the all the you know the pomp and circumstance and all the drama around it. I don't think people realize we've been doing this once a year for like the last. Well, I mean, we've skipped a couple because of budgeting procedures in the Congress and things like that. But this has been an ongoing issue for a long time. Um, I think it's much more of a political issue, truly, than it is a financial issue in the sense that, look, if if they don't extend, so. Let's just look at it kind of like mechanically. If they didn't extend the debt ceiling, it would be financial Armageddon. Okay, so it really would like so absolutely when you say that it's super true. Yeah, absolutely, because it it would be a, it, when you look at what the T. So if you, I, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but if you start looking at the TGA, which is the uh, the the um, the Treasury, uh, it's the Treasury account that holds all the money that they pay all the government bills with, right? When you look at the levels that that's at, it needs to be replenished. And the way they replenish that is by selling bonds, okay? But if they can't pass a debt limit, that means that they can't pay the existing short-term debt and they can't make the interest payments that are needed. And that would be what we refer to as like a soft default, right? And things would just break loose because the U.S. government treasuries would probably get hit very hard, at least initially on that news. And remember, Treasuries going down 25% in a year is what blew up Silicon Valley Bank, right? So that debt, that collateral is underlying every major asset in the world pretty much. And so if that collateral that's underlying all these assets free falls in price, it would be financial Armageddon without question. Like, I mean, that the whole sounds, world would implode, right? That sounds and wonderful. So this, yeah. And so this is the thing. My suspicion is going into this meeting that McCarthy is going to come out with nothing. And the reason that he's going to come out with nothing is if you're Biden, you have zero incentive to negotiate with them, right? Because if they do this, right, if they don't sign off on whatever extensions there, you know what the media is going to say. The world's going to go into chaos. They're going to refer to it as the Republican debt ceiling collapse, right? And they're going to wear it and he's going to, he'd ride a wave to reelection. Meaning, meaning we know how the media is going to spin it, right. right? Right. They're not going to tell the real story that, look, we were going into recession anyway. This sped it up. All of this economic hardship would then get saddled, right? The inflation issue, you'd watch it all get passed to the Republicans. Uh -huh. And Biden would be like, I told them not to do it. I told them not but to he, do it. But, but they have, but Republicans are the only ones that came with a plan. They're the ones that already passed a plan. Yeah. And he, and he's, but he doesn't have an incentive to give an inch because if he, if he wants to now, look, I could be wrong. This is just my take on it. I'm just looking at the game that's set up here and saying that Biden, this is a tails. He wins heads. They lose game for him, right? If they don't extend the debt limit, regardless, no one's going to tell the real story on the media, right? Things are going to go insane. More banks are going to blow up. Markets plummet. It'll be all on the Republicans. They they passed debt ceilings for Trump, but they refused to to Biden. This is all partisan politics, blah, blah, blah. We know how it's going to get spun in the media, right? And so I'm just saying it, the Republicans would wear this. The other thing is, is I, the Republicans need to, in my opinion, be a little more realistic here, meaning that we knew that we'd have to extend the debt ceiling this year, five years ago, right? Like we, the whole people are like, but we can't afford this spending. And I'm like, guys, that ship called can't afford something that sailed 50 years ago. 
Right. Right. When we got off the gold standard in 71. So as much as I hate it, as much as I would love to see a budget surplus, as much as I would like to see our government operate like a somewhat responsible business, right? You can't <laughs> at this point. You're so far off the rails that the only choice you've got is keep printing money and keep issuing debt. Yeah, because we're $30 trillion in debt at this point. Like it's, yeah. Cause like okay, any but, business, any business that was $30 trillion in debt would probably just go out of business at this point. Oh, <laughs> like, a real, well, like an actual business would be screwed. But well, and doing, here's, yeah. yeah and, and here's what's crazy. If this was a real business, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have 30 trillion in debt. It'd have exactly. 250 trillion in debt, yeah. right? Because bank uh, businesses have to record off balance sheet liabilities, right? The government doesn't, right? Oh so God. I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm like totally fascinated by your take on this because I did not expect it. I thought, I thought that Biden, I really thought that the Republicans sort of had the upper hand here in that Biden is the one that's president. So if things were to collapse, that's who people see is in charge. And so even if the media spins it and tries to say, well, it's Republicans fault, Republicans say, we brought a plan and he said, no, he did nothing. He wouldn't negotiate. And so I kind of, I'm just surprised at this take because I thought the whole problem is that Kevin McCarthy can't get Republicans to vote on just an increase in the debt ceiling. So if they can't get that to a vote, how is this going to get resolved? Well, that's what I, so you've got, and that's, and so we've got, I, I don't want to talk out of school here, but we, we've got a full-time analyst that works on staff, right? And he's got a lot of connections. We've got connections with people on Capitol Hill that manage money around there. And uh, a, a friend of mine runs a financial research company that only focuses on the political side of things, right? So that's, they're not looking at financials. They're looking at political implications for businesses and things of that nature. And what we've been told is that this is a lot closer to being a complete disaster than most people think. That there are Republicans like genuinely dug in on this. And it's, it's just scaring me because if they really are dug in, and I understand, I agree with the principle behind why they're digging in. I'm just warning them, don't do that with this. You are, you are going to lie to it. And it is Biden's fault. At the end of the day, he's the president, right? But I, you just know that's not the way it's going to go down. I was reading a tweet last night from Robert Reich talking about how Republicans always sign the debt limits and don't have problems with spending in debt when a Republican's in office. Now, I don't agree with Robert Reich on much. He does have kind of a point, right? Like it, one of the things that frust me, frustrates me about the Republican parties is we only hear about fiscal restraint and austerity when a Democrat's in the White House, yeah. Yeah, right? So and true. Otherwise, they're spending just like everybody else oh my is, gosh. right? gosh, yes, Zach. And, and Trump and, was one of the worst culprits of that. Right. And so, like, I'm just sitting there encouraging people. And this is one of the things I talk on our show about is, like, I think it's pretty obvious where I am on the political spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. But we cannot let that cloud, right, the way that we're interpreting real life events, especially in the investing and finance world, because investing in finance doesn't care about what you think politically, right? You got to look at things through a naked lens. My, my take on this whole situation could be wrong. I'm just looking at the chess here and going, this is a can't win scenario, guys. You, it, it's, and it, here's one of the lines they're going to say. It's the Republicans that wouldn't sign an increase of the debt limit. If they break it, they own it. That's what everybody's going to say. That's what Wall Street's going to say. That's what CNBC is going to say, right? And there'll be that contingent of all of us that look and go, wait a second, Biden's in charge. I'm just saying that's not going to be the narrative. And I feel like this would be sort of the economic version of the Supreme Court ruling on Roe v. Wade. You know, mm -hmm. while personally I was a big supporter of that ruling for a variety of different reasons, I knew that once that ruling came down, uh, uh, what looked like a landslide election up in uh, in fall turned into absolutely not that. And, and I'm saying this situation, it reminds me exactly of that on steroids. That's so interesting. That take is so interesting. Yeah. I'm really, well, now I'm super nervous because so, OK, then. So, OK, let's just assume then that Republicans can't make this happen. And that, and and I feel like to some extent, I wonder if Joe Biden in this meeting that he has with Kevin McCarthy, if Kevin says, Joe, I have people in my caucus who will not play ball on this. 
what do you want me to do? We're going to default. Do you care about politics or do you care about the country? Because if you care about the country, you're going to give a little. You're going to you're going to pull back spending a little bit to save the country because otherwise I, my hands are tied. Because I think Kevin would probably want to do the thing. He'd probably do. Oh, this. yeah. He would raise the debt ceiling and do a clean bill. He's got the Matt Gateses and the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world saying, nope, you're not. We're not doing this until there's a spending cut. So would Joe Biden give a little just for the sake of the country or are we really doomed like are we really going to default i i uh, look i think it'll I, I think something will get done before this happens because just literally nobody wins from this like it's just not good for anybody politically whether it's right or wrong again i am all about cutting spending at whatever cost we need to i'm just saying this ain't the route to take J just because you can't default right um I, so I, I w would Biden would Biden give an inch? I don't. I mean, this is a guy that just said the greatest danger to our country is white supremacists. Right. He doesn't seem like a cat that's too interested about what's best for our country. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I'm not trying to denigrate him. I'm not saying he hasn't done good things in his career. I'm just saying, I'm saying what I no, see. We totally all could, we'll say that for you. Yeah, we'll totally <laughs> say all those things for you. Yeah. Well, it's just. All you see are politically motivated statements and actions, right? right? Like there's nothing principled going on here. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think, I mean, look, I think that they, if I was his advisor economically and I was on his side, I would tell him, don't give an inch. Uh, your reelection would be signed the minute that they didn't pass that debt ceiling. It'd be the best thing to happen for you, Joe. Don't give an inch. He doesn't have any incentive. Like the Republicans wear it if this goes sideways. Okay. Well, wow. Wow. Okay. Sucks in every possible way. Yeah, exactly. So, thank <laughs> totally you unexpected. for this uplifting chat. <laughs> I know, right? It's unex unexpected and not uplifting. And it's going to, it's just one more thing. You know, it's just one more awful thing in this administration, right? I mean, like, I feel oh. like it's just been like one hit after another hit after another hit. And after all the border stuff and after all the, just everything that we've had to deal with over the past two years, it's like just another gut punch. Isn't it? Yeah, well, and and then there's also right. There's no recognition of it. There's no there's no humility of hey, we got this wrong, but let's pull together. You know, like right. you know what I mean. Like there's no there's no acknowledgement. Everything is political hand hand to hand right. combat. And You're right. what's amazing is they only they act as if there's one side of the aisle only engaging in that. You know what I mean? True. And it's just true. It's craziness. It's just and listen, madness. We're we're the chicks on the right, but, and we're obviously partisan, you know, but I mean, we've even said on our show, they, they all suck when it comes to spending all oh, them, like the God. right and the left, all of them, they all literally spend our money. Like they're drunken sorority girls on spring break. I mean, they all do it. So we are the first to admit that. So it's not like it's one party that has done this and led us to this horrible place that we are today. I mean, in 30 trillion, over $30 trillion in debt. <laughs> I can't even look at the debt clock without having an anxiety attack. Uh, yeah. So, and, and I don't think people, we did a number of, I don't quote me, but I want to say something like, if, if you stacked a trillion dollars on top of each other, oh it extends God. like somewhere like 6,800 miles or something. That's oh. a, a trillion, right? Yes. It's like 60, it's like 68,000 miles. I'm sorry. It's I can't. crazy. It's right? insanity. It's, it's insane. It is. Yeah. It, it's, it's such big numbers. You can't even really wrap your head around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Zach Abraham, we always love talking to you about these kinds of issues. Uh, Zach, for those of you who may just be joining us, Chief Investment Officer at Bulwark Capital Management. You can check him out at knowyourriskradio.com. I'm sure you're going to be talking about this and many other issues of importance to the American people. Everyone should tune in. Knowyourriskradio.com. Is there any other place that people should look to get information? Uh, they can follow me on Twitter at KYR Radio or just go to BulwarkCapitalManagement.com. And uh, yeah, just Google us. Know Your Risk Radio, Bulwark Capital Management. Be easy to find. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, so much. Thank you ladies. It. Investment advisory services offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered specific investment advice, does not take into consideration your specific situation, and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and are not guaranteed, and past performance is no guarantee of future results. For specific tax advice on strategy, consult with a qualified tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein.